Hello everybody, um, this is my um, round out eight game. Uh, we were playing against Hong Kong um, and um, it, even though they were lower graded than us, um, we could tell it was going to be a tough match um, due to the, the results that they've had um, uh, throughout the, the tournament so far. Um, my opponent was um, uh, Quen Yui Pang. Uh, he'd already drawn with two 2500s um, and he'd got a few wins as well. He only just lost his first game, I think, uh, with the previous round. Um, so he's, a, he's, he's having a good tournament so far. Um, and uh, I was playing on board one because uh, we rested Carl today. Um, and um, I, that means I've got another black. Uh, so <laughs> um, I'm not too... Uh, usually I'm a, a bit... I prefer playing white quite a lot and I seem to play play well as white. However, my previous two games with white, this this tournament I've, uh, I've had to, to take draws. So maybe I am playing better with black this time, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's uh, just a bit unlucky really. Um, I'll take you through the game. Anyway, he was graded um, in 1980 something. Um, so it was quite low graded, um, but you know he's already taken draws with the two games, so it could be a difficult game. And, and in preparing for the match, um, I knew that he actually played quite a lot of kind of um, obscure openings. And so he's kind of done before. He's kind of done like knight f3, knight f6, b4. Um, he's even played e4 before. He's played d4. He's played e3. Um, however, today he turned up and uh, he felt like going D3, uh, which is um, what he did. Um, and uh, I had to have a little think here because I've got to be careful with my move order. Um, so, for example, if I assume it's going to be some sort of Fianchetto English with C4, um, and I start playing moves like, I don't know, C5, um, all of a sudden he can just play E4, and I'm kind of in a Sicilian, which I have no idea about. Um, However, if I go, well, what I played was knight f6. Um, I don't know really what I'd do against bishop g5 here, but um, I, I may, might have to play e6 then and just play bishop e7 and continue like that. That would have been an interesting alternative. Maybe I'll play c5, I don't know. Uh, but he continued with f4, and of course he's transposed here to uh, the bird's opening, um, which is, is perfectly good. It's, it's almost, though, kind of like a reverse. Um, I played d5 to stop. Um, e4 coming uh, straight away in the, in the middle of the, the board um, and what I've kind of got now is I've kind of got a um, uh, the white pieces versus the Dutch but with an extra tempo for white um, so I kind of know about some lines against the Dutch where you can be a little bit cheeky on this diagonal um, with the king but also on this diagonal hitting this b2 pawn here and you'll see that in the game. So he plays g3, and he plays g3 quite quickly. I did expect him to go e3 there and then just bishop e2. I thought that might have been a more sensible option. Um, and when he played g3, I played g6, and I played. Uh, I took a bit of time thinking about g6 because I didn't know what kind of setup to go for. Because uh, I, I could easily play something like bishop g4, take the knight, and then play e6. So my pawns are on light squares, and my bishop that I've got would be dark squares. That might have been an okay setup. Um, however, I decided to go for this. And as soon as he played bishop g2, I just played bishop g7 dead quick, hoping that he was going to castle, uh, which he did. And he actually played it relatively quickly. Because now after queen b6 check, he's in a little bit of trouble here. Because uh, it's kind of like a little trick. So um, if he plays e3... I can play knight g4, and I'm hitting both the e3 pawn and the b2 pawn at the same time. Um, and I don't know if he just completely missed this, or uh, because I, I moved quite quickly with g, bishop g7 as if it was going to be a normal, um, just him castling, then me castling, and then we'll start to play. Uh, but I, I did see this coming, and um, I thought he was in, in a lot of bother now. Um, he plays king h1, which I think is a bit naive, because I've, I've always had ideas of, well, you'll, you'll see what happened in the game. So after knight g4, obviously I'm threatening knight f2 check, knight e3, um, picking up the bishop for the knight if I want it. Um, so he's, he's forced really to go d4 because he can't guard against those threats as well as the threat of losing the b2 pawn from this bishop and my queen combining um, on it. So I was, I was very happy that he had to play d4 here because this basically completely ruins his opening setup. Uh, because he really wants to try and play either e4 or, or c4. Probably e4 is the, the main move. Um, and he's, he's kind of been forced into a kind of stonewall structure with a fianchetto as well, which doesn't make much sense. And uh, I think if I give him a few moves to actually untangle, he, he should be perfectly fine. So he plays a move like um, he plays e3, uh, queen, e3, queen e2, 
uh, guards the pawn, and then he plays c3, knight, the other knight comes to d2, uh, and then he sticks a knight on e5, and he's going to be okay. So I've got to act fast here because I've got an advantage. Uh, so h5, <clears throat> which is, is a reason why I thought king h1 was a bit of a strange move, because I'm always looking to play h5 in these kind of positions. Um, and then I'm gonna uh, at some point I'm gonna go on to h4 um, and hopefully open this h file and basically develop my rook without actually moving it, uh, which is something I quite like to do. Um, but also h5 uh, kind of guards against any uh, h3 and g4 pushes he might have had, uh, because if h3 now, then I go back to h6, um, and this knight is coming into f5 where it not only hits this pawn, which would be winning it if he doesn't play e3 or c3, I'm also hitting this pawn on g3 as well. Uh, and he, he can't stop this. He, whatever he does, he's uh, I'm getting a knight on g3 uh, because he can't stop me playing h4. Uh, okay, maybe he, he has to take on h4 uh, afterwards, but um, I suppose he does. I don't know. King h2, knight here. Or well, actually, maybe maybe queen e1 is a play. Oh, no, it's not because the d4 pawn's loose. Um, so, yeah, maybe king h2, knight here, e3, and then I'll probably play something like h4 here. Um, and if g4, then my knight jumps into g3, uh, and my knight can always bounce back to this e4 square uh, if it needs to. Um, and if he if he takes it, then the h file is open. I've got my bishop on c8, which hasn't moved, which is also developed. Um, so it's it's just a really nice position for me. And I love this kind these kind of knight maneuvers. This is my bread and butter. And you can see that this knight's going to come to this square, then this square, and then jump into e4 and support the attack. Um, so yeah, I would have been very happy had he gone down, down this line. Um, he chose just to defend the pawn on d4, which I think is a wise decision. Um, although I really think he should have possibly played e3 just to give himself a bit more room. Um, but here I'm, I just develop normally. Um, I'm just going to bring this other knight into the attack. Because um, if he does h3, then the same as happens as what I showed you before. Um, if he does something like e3, which might be a better idea, my knight just comes to f6. My knight jumps into e4, uh, and notice here as well how he, he can't even do this move because then my knight comes to e3, fork and his queen and rook. Um, so he's he's really tied down in, in this this position. It's extremely difficult for him to play, and I'm, I'm definitely already better, and I knew that I was better. Um, and I saw his next move coming, um, and I thought it was just going to be bad for him because um, I take, um, obviously can't take with the d pawn because then I've got knight f2 check because the queen supports it. Um, so he takes back with the f pawn. I did think about sacking my piece for a split second, and then I thought, oh, why bother? Just just play h4. Um, and I think if he doesn't take it, he's just getting mulled because um, I'm just taking on g3, and he can't stop it. Uh, if he plays bishop f4, then not only is the b2 pawn hanging, um, but also after takes bishop takes its pins now by the rook. I've actually got knight e3 winning the exchange again. Um, or taking on b2 if I want to. I'm almost spoiled for choice there with, with that variation. So I think he did a good move there by taking it. Uh, and then rook takes pawn, and obviously I'm threatening this pawn now, so he plays h3. Um, but the, the key thing is, is that when you do win a pawn, um, don't instantly kind of like retreat back into your position. So here I could have very easily played a move like knight h6, which probably would st still be a lot better for me. Uh, and yeah, it's got a good purpose. It's coming to f5. Um, However, um, I really want to press home my advantage. So the knight's not actually under attack at the moment because the pawn's pinned. So let's just develop another piece. Uh, and you can, some of you will be able to be able to see what I'm, I'm going to do. Um, queen one attacks my rook, so I just need to move it back. Queen g3. Still, the knight is not under attack. I've got to be a little bit careful about these diagonals coming up. But uh, castle and queen side, because obviously I'm bringing this piece into the attack. The only piece that isn't really drilling into the attack is the bishop. Um, king g1 so now he is threatening to take my knight um, however he now falls back into this pin um, so therefore I just do bishop takes pawn I, I don't think he could have avoided this um, otherwise I'm just going to do rook h8 join in the attack and then I've got some sort of sacrifices that win plays bishop f4 uh, take it um, and then I could just retreat my knight back to f6 here and this was what I was originally going to do I'll just go I'll play knight f6 I'm going to double my rooks on the h file, and then I'm going to probably pick up this pawn as well. So I would be two pawns up then. Um, however, I saw that I've got this move e5, um, which I thought was really interesting. Um, and I had to calculate the line queen g3 here, <coughs> um, just in case. Um, and I was going to do pawn takes pawn. 
Pawn six knights. Pawn six pawn check, discovered check. E3, I think, would have been the best move. Pawn six pawn b2. Uh, and notice how I've just lost a knight, but I've also got a rook and a bishop being forked at the moment. But you can't take them because then I'll take the rook and queen. Uh, so therefore, I think he has to play something like knight d2. I take here queen. Rook takes queen. And then I just play rook g5. And the pawn is pinned now, so he's not picking up another piece. He wants to material. I'm an exchange up, but I've also got one, two, three. Oh, just three pawns and the rook against the knight. Um, I'm threatening to win another pawn. He can't do bishop here because this pawn's loose from the queen, so I was expecting bishop h3. And I was just going to simplify now by playing rook h8. Uh, and now I was going to do rook takes bishop and then rook takes pawn. And I'd be four pawns up and I, his king would be so weak. Um, I, I would win that quite easily. I might not have to do rook takes bishop. I might be able to delay it a little bit and play some other moves. But uh, I just thought that that was going to be an easily winning game uh, from that point on. But there's quite a long variation to, to calculate, and I, I had to see the, the rook g5 move at the end. Otherwise, it it, it completely falls on its head, and, and possibly I might not not want to play this line. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm attacking his queen. The knight's defending the pawn, even though the knight's attacked. I'm also threatening this pawn if his queen moves away. So he plays queen d2. Um, I just think, well, there's no point going into too many complications now. I just play knight f6. Uh, it comes out with knight a3. Finally, gets his knight out. Um, and I saw that he's got an idea because I played knight e4, uh, queen e3, and, and then I saw his idea. He was going to bring this knight to c4. Uh, I take it, and then everything gets swapped off on e4. Um, but I, I kind of calculated this line all, all the way through. Um, although I, I kind of give him a little bit of counterplay here, I, I should definitely do pawn takes pawn first. Um, <coughs> if I do pawn takes pawn first, then he has to take back with the pawn because he doesn't want to swap queens. Uh, and then the rest of the, the game is easy. Um, however, and, and that was a mistake by me. Um, however, I, I did have it under control, but only just. Um, and it was a little bit scary. Uh, so he plays knight c4. Um, I probably shouldn't take, but I do take. He takes the knight. Um, oh, I can, I can actually just take the pawn here. Bishop takes bishop. Queen takes bishop. And now when I take the pawn, he doesn't have to take back. I can actually do rook takes f7 uh, when it would be a massive mistake for me to play rook takes h3 um, because um, this is now really good for him uh, and he actually gets um, well I thought he had mate threats but he actually has perpetual because he was queen e6 check king b8 can't go to d8 otherwise it's queen d7 check mate queen d6 and I can't go to a8 because rook f8 leads to checkmate <laughs> Uh, takes takes queen d8 queen takes queen um, so I have to go back to c8 uh, and he has his perpetual and he's got a draw um, so I've got to be very careful in this position um, I decided to do pawn takes pawn check first of all so obviously it's check so he's not going to be able to do anything I think king g2 was the better move for him there um, I think that was a little um, premature playing e3 um, I decided to play a6 just to give myself my king some breathing room uh, and that's all I'm going to do now just give my king some breathing room pick up this pawn um, and win the game. He plays, takes the pawn back. I play rook takes pawn. He hasn't got any discovered um, or any perpetual checks because he still still might have some. Plays rook e1. Uh, and now I, I was looking at queen b5 and queen a5 in the game. For some reason, I just wanted to keep uh, my c pawn. Sorry, I played king b8 just to get my king running away. Plays rook f2, queen c5, and I was going to put it to, to possibly b5 or a5, which might have been better moves. But now he plays king f1. Uh, and it's all over because of queen h5. Uh, he can't stop this idea of rook here check, uh, picking up loads of pieces. An example line might be, uh, I don't know, rook f7, maybe threatening some sort of sacks. Uh, I just play rook h1 check, king um, king f2, let's say, queen h2 check, king h3, uh, king f3, yeah, I don't know, even rook here check, and then as the king comes forward, oh, king comes here. Or are we mating with queen g3 means yeah, mating instead? Uh, so that's one example line at the end. Uh, you could do rook g2. Then I've got rook f8 check. Um, rook f2, rook h1 check. He has to take the rook of the queen, but anyway, king here and queen h3 mate. Um, so it's it's impossible for him to avoid this. He can't do anything. Um, but it, it's really important to note now, I'm going to go back a few moves. 
that actually in, in this position here, um, it's really quite dangerous um, for me as a player because you don't see the computer evaluations uh, as you're playing. And actually, if you, I, I was a little worried about something like queen f4. Um, and I thought I would be able to do rook check, queen b2 check, but I wasn't too sure because he's got a mate here if my queen moves away. But also, um, he's got ideas of rook f8 check, swapping rooks. And then if my queen say on b2, he might have a factual because my king can't go to b8 first. So, for example, if I do something, um, let's say I do queen b2, okay? Well, uh, okay, not queen b2 because he's got queen c7 mate, but let's say I do a5. I do a5, okay? Then rook check, um, rook takes f8, queen takes f8. I can probably get out of this, but I have to go, oh, we can go queen d8 in this line. Uh, but if I couldn't, if I go king c7, uh, then he's got a perpetual here between, uh, oh, actually, no, not there. He's got a queen f4 check, and my king's kind of stuck. And when you when you're winning, you start to see all of these different variations. You think, oh no, uh, there could be some sort of perpetual here. Uh, but uh, I think I've got rook here check, and we do king b2, queen b2 check, um, and now it's looking really nasty for him. So let's say he goes um, wherever he goes, he's got to come forward, and then I just go rook here check. Um, if he goes back with a queen. Uh, then I just play uh, rook h2 check again, uh, and I'll pick up the queen. So it's, it's dead easy. But you've got to be worried about these things because you don't want to allow a perpetual check um, at the end of the uh, game when you've clearly won it so far because that's how good players get their extra half points. Um, but yeah, uh, quite, um, quite a routine victory really. Um, got him in the opening uh, and never let go. Uh, really happy with the win. Um, looking at the team result today, um, we, uh, it looks like Alex has just won on board too. Uh, I thought he was going to take a draw actually when I finished my game. He, he was just around repeating moves uh, and he played on for a win. So it's a well done to him. And unfortunately, we've lost got the bottom two boards. Um, so we've drawn the match with Hong Kong, uh, which is a bit disappointing. Um, but I know that we'll have another chance to write that tomorrow and try and get uh, a victory tomorrow. Thanks very much for watching. Um, if you've got any questions about any of the games, uh, please let me know um, and give it a thumbs up. Thanks very much.